Let everybody get situated. Which, what's this right here? It's black on weed. That's uh, my boy Al Harrington. We, we smoking secret Cushman. Black on right there. Okay. So before we get started, we got to get started. Yeah. Yeah, because it's black on you in the black market. So before we talk business, we got to get business minded. Black on weed, baby. This is black on weed. Black on weed. We gotta smoke this for all the niggas who who doing a lot of time. Oh yeah. Just for oh, selling yeah. bud. Black, black on weed. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this black. This black. <laughs> this black as hell. This real black right here. You can almost hear the ancestors high, but they like singing a slow song. They get it. What song they singing? Swing low, sweet cherry. Okay. Not way in the water. No, this is like Kunta Kente, great, 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 great grandson. Okay, okay. Yeah. You can't tell me Kunta Kente wasn't a real person. It had to be. You would have said Toby? Mm mm. You would have took that out with him? I don't even know how he got in that position. <laughs> Why, when, when was him and Massa talking? That Massa figured out he wasn't answering that Toby. Nobody ever thought of that. Right. But at some Nobody point, of that. he didn't, I mean, Toby ain't really just a nigga name like that. Especially, how you gonna go from Kunta Kente? Like in Africa, Kunta Kente is the shit. Yeah, that shit sound hard, though. That sound like a warrior. Exactly, and then you gonna come to America and be Toby, nigga? Hell no. Yeah, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> I'd rather be Jebediah or some shit mm -hmm. like that than goddamn. <laughs> I'm just saying, nigga, Kunta Kente hit now. I'm talking about if you had to have a slave name, I'd take Jebediah. Jebediah? Fuck no. That's a, that's one of the motherfuckers off the oatmeal box. I ain't gonna say a slave name, but if like, like if white people changed your name, what you think your name would be if white people changed your I think name? Each other dying, you huh? you want that shit to be your name? I'm not accepting that, bro. Nice. Like, I want one of them. If if I had to get like a, a white people name, yeah, I want one of them stupid ass white people, like a last name, like like what? Alexander. Alexander. Yeah. I Maximus. Can't, I can't be no Bob, no Bill. Dick. I can be Dick. <laughs> you know I, mean? I can be that. You know I, mean? I would hate to be Dick, man. Because when you become an old man, you're just like a creep. For real? Yeah, that shit, Dick, man. Don't nobody want to meet no uh, old motherfucker named Dick. Uh, it means detective. No, it don't. That what it means. Hold on. Let me light the door again. Oh, you got it. Mm hmm. See, we expanded. We ain't got no weed yet, but I do got my own lighters. Hey. You know, we enjoy we gotta, it. We got to have our own strand, though. Let's talk to Al. We talk to Al? We got to get Al up here, man. Are the cameras on? Yeah, man. We just oh, like we just like to get a little banter in before we get to talking that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, get them acclimated to what we're about to do. Oh, OK. This is a special occasion, though. It's not every day we get black on weed. It's just exactly. weed that we got from some black folks. Exactly. So I got all different strands of black on weed. Sit that I, shit on the table. Yeah, all that. This is Viola, black on weed by Al Harrington. I invested in the company. So yes, I am. Uh, I own shares of the company before IPO. So you feel me? Oh, that's how y'all want to do it without an intro. <laughs> Welcome back to the black market. Uh, you know. 85 yeah. South Show presents the black market experience. That's where we reach out to some dope ass people in the in the middle of the community who doing some dope things, like bringing good dope, All making that. good investments. All that. Now, I, hold up, I got my research department on there. Oh, they get it. Like, I'm gonna make sure. That you get all your proper propers, you feel me? Appreciate it. Today in, on the black market with us, the, today we got a young man, a young black entrepreneur, 
who saw the vision all the way through. You feel me? I got my man Aristotle in here. Now see, that's a cold name. Appreciate it. Now appreciate you don't have to change your shit. Like when they go through the paperwork, they're gonna be like, Aristotle, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, you named yeah. after a brilliant scientist. Yeah, that's my real name too. Word. So did you like in the hood, niggas used to fuck with you and be like, oh Aristotle, nigga. I ain't never nah, met a so, nigga so named like, Aristotle. So that's my middle name. Okay. So like in the hood, uh, well when I was growing up, they just called me Cario. Like Mario with the K. I fucks with it. Yeah. Cario. I might yeah, have Cario. a son or something named that one day. Yeah. yeah. So like at home, that's what they call me and shit, but right? you know. You gotta pass that, bro. I'm, I'm about trying, to, I'm man. Trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to smoke the black on weed. Too. Come on, yeah, bro. Man. Don't do me like that on camera in front of the black people, man. <laughs> Tell me how you got your start. What, what, what was your motivation? What it is that you exactly do? What you doing? What you wanna be doing? That's what this whole black market experience is about. So basically from starting how I got my motivation and what I do, right? Okay. So how it all started was I was in the army. Okay, army of one. Yeah, so I was in the army. Uh, I joined when I was 18, okay. active duty. Um, and basically... Where did you go when you, you know, when you got through with basic and all that? Where did you, you get to see any of the world? Well, I traveled around like the country, like basically like when hurricanes happen, yeah. when uh, natural disasters happen, like we went for Hurricane Harvey, uh, okay. the one in Puerto Rico when uh, Donald Trump was throwing the paper towel. Oh, this is recent as hell. Yeah, like, I just got the army uh, March 2020. Oh shit, that's what you can you can clap for that. Yeah. And we appreciate your service, brother. Yeah. Yeah, you was over there when he was throwing the paper towels. My team went, well, I didn't get there as soon as they did it, but yeah. We did, we went to Puerto Rico, we went to uh, Texas for that, to respond to that. Um, to the flood? Yeah, to okay. Hurricane Harvey. Okay. Um, I went to Boston, I just went around a lot of uh, places in the country, Indiana, okay. like to do certain missions. So I didn't, I was about to deploy, but I actually rejected it. I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna have to get out. Smart. Nah, actually, I wanted to deploy because, uh, so I was, here was my plan. When you deploy, you can save up about 20 to 30,000, but I was also a barber while I was in. So you, so, was, you was making bread. Oh yeah, I was making like 3,000 a month while cutting hair, and then 4,000 off the army, so I was making about 7K a month by the time I was, what, 22? And I became a millionaire at 23, but I was still in the army. Nigga, this got to be a movie. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up. That shit happened fast. How, how did you go from 22-year-old barber making 7K a month, which ain't shit to throw no rock at now, that's decent. Right. To a whole million now. So this is how I did it. I, um, I was making four grand off the army. Okay. I was living off that four grand. I, I, I literally lived below my means and budgeted my life through that four grand and invested that three grand on barber money. So I could still cut hair, you know what I'm saying? I still cut hair to this day. Mm. But, um, well, well not I couldn't really, get my, I cut shit, my hair. I couldn't get my shit cut by a millionaire barber, bitch. Okay? <laughs> nah, man, fuck that, Why not? Nah, because I ain't used to that. I'm, I need a barber that need to cut my hair as much as I need <laughs> my shit cut. I need that. Hey, I feel that shit, though, right there. <laughs> that nigga need this. I, I got them three. I got them three. <laughs> Nah, if I cut today, it'll be free, though. There you go. I just like to do it because it's therapeutic and it's a craft, and it's also, like, just, you know, networking and talking back to the story of what you want to know how it went down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, I was living off the barber, I mean, I was living off the army money, but I was investing the barber money. Okay. And then, um, I just, out of curiosity, I just wanted to, you know, research the stock market, but I was doing this privately. I weren't telling nobody or nothing like that. So how the thought got on me going to Instagram was literally because I was posting my gains and shit to my family members. You know, when you when you on Facebook, it's strictly family. Right, when right. you're on Instagram, it's a lot of strangers because people following you. So I was posting it to family and stuff and they wasn't responding. Like they wasn't liking it, but if I post something personal, they'll like it. So I said, you know what? I don't want to cloud y'all because I have a passion for this. I'm like, I don't want to cloud my timeline with just investing. If you fuck with my investments, I'm going to just make a new investment page. So that's where it came from. And basically, uh, I, I created a new uh, investment page, and that shit just took off. Like, people start following it, and that's all they wanted to see was me invest. You feel me? And what were you investing in? In the stock beginning. Market. You know what I'm saying? Like marijuana. Canadian marijuana. So that actually was my first investment, which is ironic because, you know, 
Now I'm heavily investing in marijuana. You know what I mean? So. Why did you pick weed? Marijuana. It's because, it's because of me experiencing the streets of Atlanta. I knew that when I was young, that? that's how my dad fed me. What's that, Atlanta? Uh, Southside, Cleveland Avenue. Already? Yeah, so that's how my dad fed me, and I saw him make a lot of money. So in the back of my head, I always had that weed gonna always sell. You know what I mean? Bro, you the weed man, son? I was. <laughs> and you I done was. took, bro, no, hold up, because this is black history right now. You yeah. the weed man, son? I am. And huh? you done made the family legit? Yeah. Then you get one more clap, nigga. Yeah. Get one more clap. I ain't even, hey, we, I'm so high, I ain't even mean to say that shit, you know, God damn this motherfucker. Your daddy gonna be like, oh, this nigga here. Nah, 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 he'll do it no more. He'll exactly. Do it no more. Exactly. Yeah, but, um, but let's, let me ask you a few questions for the people who might be watching. Because, you know, it's, it's a lot of that popping up now. A lot of people saying, hey, join this class, or let me teach you how to invest. Like, what, what type of advice do you give people who may be standing right there ready to invest but don't have the knowledge of what to invest in or where to invest? So as a beginner, the first thing I'm going to tell people is it depends on which lane you're trying to go. So there's two lanes in investing in my world. Right. It's either you're going to be a long-term trader or you're going to be a day trader. Southside niggas. All right. What would you tell a nigga from the South Side? He don't know nothing about no day trade. No, no, trade. but I'm about to keep, I'm about to keep gonna saying it. Bro, I'm trying so, to do so, it so, like so, you look, doing it, bro. So look, OK, if he's trying to do it like me, he want to be a trader. OK. You feel me? So, But I also do long-term invest, because long-term investing is important. I'll get into that. So basically, if you want to long-term invest, you're going to have to learn what is called fundamental analysis. OK. Right? So there's two type of analysis we I, I teach, fundamental and technical. Fundamental is the study of the company's profitability by their balance sheets, their debt to income, uh, all of that, right? And then um, technical analysis is the study of price charts, the candlestick, the stuff everybody don't wanna, they scared of, you feel me? Right. All those graphs, all those lines. So that's what I specialize in because that helps you make the quick money. The fundamental is the, for the long term because you're studying whether the company will do good long term based on how profitable they are right now. Okay. You feel me? Okay. So those, so what I tell people is, which lane are you trying to choose? They say, well, I'm, I don't really, if they tell me they don't got time, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna point you to the fundamental lane. I'm gonna say, okay, you got money, but you don't have time. So somebody like y'all, y'all got money, but y'all might not have time to, you know what I'm saying, watch the stock market. Right. So I would point, that's where I pointed DC. Like DC and Fly done made. Don't say, said, don't say no, no, don't, don't, oh. don't do that. Don't do that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have no money, bro. We don't have shit. We don't have nothing. You know the feds listening? I am Nigga, mad. What money? Why y'all ain't put me in that group chat? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But my boy DC, I taught him how to do the dividends, cause he told me he ain't got time so, to watch the yeah, charts and trade. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I know I'm trying to. Yeah, I ain't gonna say numbers and shit, but yeah, I taught DC the dividends. He made some money or whatnot, and then um, but that's what I teach. So dividends is basically uh, a portion of the company's profits that they pay back to the shareholders. Right. So when you buy a stock, you are what is called a shareholder. Exactly. Right. So. Certain companies, in order to attract shareholders, which is you and I, they offer nice dividends. Yeah, like Walmart like, and Target. And um, yeah, they offer, Walmart offer a good dividend. Um, but the best dividend companies, yeah, like that up. And we smoking black on weed, by the way. Once shout again. To, shout, out to me, shout out to Al Harrington Viola. I'm an investor in this company. So we're me legal too. investing. <laughs> me too. <laughs> About to be. Yeah. You high? Yeah, yeah, I am high. Because you was talking about dividends. I was talking about dividends, and then I had to goddamn, you feel me? Yeah. But anyway. Because you getting dividends, your mind automatically went to that. Exactly. So, anyways. Y'all looking for some more investors? Yeah. Because I want some dividends. Nah. And some weed. This shit fine. Keep going, talk about the dividend stuff. Yeah, all that, man. So, when, so for instance, like a company like AT&T, a company like uh, O, 
uh, which is uh, Old Realty, their realty right. Um, my favorite dividend companies would be Exxon Mobil and then Mo, which is, you know, people who smoke Marlboro. Yeah. So Mo is a great dividend paying company. Yeah. So if you, that's, that's what I recommend everyone to invest in is Mo because for one, they're heavily exposed into cannabis now. Yeah. So they uh, recently bought Kronos Group, which is a competitor to Canopy Growth, mm -hmm. which is one of the number one Canadian marijuana stocks. Yep. And right now, Canada, Canada is, is legal, federalized. It's, it's federal legal, you know what I'm saying? So on a federal level, but in the United States, it's not. It's, it's only legal on a state level. Right. You feel me? So. Oh, shit, Aristotle. Yeah, you know, so I'm just very educated on just the stock market or whatnot. But yeah. What made you what what pushed you to the to the stocks and investing though? So you you stacked up this barber money and you like you just had an idea to like, I need to do something with this. Before I get to that point, it's Alcheria Group, but the ticker is M O Mo. But yeah, what made me uh what intrigued my uh, mind was just curiosity, man. I had about 10,000 saved up in barber money, mm -hmm. and I was feeling myself. I was a young dude, but I sat, I sat back and thought to myself, I said, I, I'm trading too much time barbering. It takes me 30 minutes to cut a hair and I get $15, right? Cut a hair and I get $15. But in the stock market, I can make $200 in 15 minutes. So I'm like, okay. Why am I sitting here cutting hair? I could just use this money to, so I literally gave up on barbering. Like cold turkey was like, it well, it wasn't really like cold drugs, turkey. Yeah. Basically, basically when I uh, started making money in the stock market, that's when I, when I made my first thousand in a day, I, I cut barbering out cold turkey. Who taught you the game? Me. Self-taught. Yeah. Like uh, reading books, uh, the For Dummies series. So you know how they got uh, stock market for dummies. The first book I ever wrote, read was Technical Analysis for Dummies. Then I read Fundamental Analysis. Then I read Price Chart. And then I read Day Trading for Dummies. Then I read Swing Trading for Dummies. And what I learned was when you start dabbling into something, it'll lead clues to other things. So as I'm learning things, let's just say I don't understand the way the book taught it. I might go YouTube it. I might go Google it. So, and then that might lead to something else because YouTube might have a, like another video that pop up that say this. And I'm like, okay, let me click on that next. And it's like a trickle down effect. And then you just start, so it starts from one idea and then you just start, you know what I'm saying? It just expanded into a lot. And then I'm meeting people, networking, other traders, learning from them, they learning from me. And then just a lot of stuff that just makes you a good trader. Mm -hmm. So what I did was, I decided to create a program in, in a book. I, I decided to write a book about two years ago. What's it called? <clears throat> um, Aristotle Investing Guide. So this book ended up going viral because I was just trying to teach people the stock market because I got tired of because I didn't have enough time to mentor people. I was in the Army when I wrote this book. Right, right. So this was, I dropped this book um, the beginning of 2019 is when I dropped that book. Um, so if I had to go through my history, I can just say this. Uh, I started my company December like 30th, 2018, right? It was when I started the LLC, but I really started it back in September 2018. Uh, 2019, I cleared about maybe 400K, but I was still in the Army, so I was feeling myself. You I should like, be. Yeah, I was like, shit, man. I, and then that wasn't including the Army money, because the Army, I, got, I made like 40,000. I mean, like 400K or 300, 300K from the stock market. Uh, well, not the stock market, but from business, like books, all that stuff. And then the next year, I flipped that 300K into millions. And then now we're in 2021. So 2020, I boom. But I, I had already made a million before the pandemic hit. So I was a millionaire before COVID even hit. I had an M saved up, and I was still in the Army. Damn, that is fucking crazy. That's crazy. I, I ain't never heard nobody in the military say no shit like that. Yeah, and then it was a whole it was a whole transition just getting out of the military because you got to think, not only was I black, but I was rich. You still was black. You still black. No, I mean, yeah. No, you say you was black. You ain't got that much fucking money. I'm talking talk about... No, nah, nigga, you still black. Nigga, I was black. <laughs> I'm talking about like the reasons why. <laughs> I'm fucking, yeah, I'm fucking with yeah, you. Yeah, you funny. Yeah, you still black, nigga. Nah, for real. 
Don't let the white people steal you, man. <laughs> Stay over here, bro. Yeah. No, you just, man, it's nah, just dope to hear this type of shit, man. You got a very inspiring story. Like, where can, where can people who listening right now reach out and get some more of this game from, man? Like, where you located? I'm located, I mean, I'm in Atlanta, man. Uh, that's my home base. Though. I work, anywhere I go is where I work. I make 100% of my money online. Yeah. So what I'm saying, like, where can they find you online? Like, social? Oh, uh, Aristotle underscore investments, A-R-I-S-T-O-T-L-E underscore investments, uh, YouTube, Aristotle Investments, Google, Aristotle Investments. You'll see all the articles, everything pop up. Um, yeah. Hey, what's up, fellas? Look, cuffing season is coming up, and if you're trying to, you know, make sure what you cuff stay cuffed, you need to get some of this blue stuff. That's right, blue chew. You need to blow her back out one good time so she'll be happy that you cuffed her. First step is simple, like visit bluechew.com, then consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and then once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within a couple of days. So if you can benefit, you know, from some extra confidence, you know, when it's time to perform, bluechew.com can help. And we've got a special deal for all of our listeners. You get to try Blue Chew for free. That's right. All you have to do is go to the website and use the promo code BLACK. That's B-L-A-C-K. Yeah, when you check out, it's going to ask for the promo code. You type in in capital letters, B-L-A-C-K, and then you'll get it for free. You just pay $5 shit. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Uh, man, what's, what's been your experience coming from the south side of Atlanta to, you know, this million dollar investment? these million dollar investments and becoming this million dollar investor? So a story, I lived in Atlanta from a zero to, uh, I moved away when I was 16, then I moved to Kansas because my stepfather joined the military. I was just nowhere. So I was going to Creekside High School on the south side. Playboy Cardi was actually on my basketball team when I was in high school. Shout out to Playboy Cardi. Yeah, he was he on could hoop. Actually he could. Uh, we, we took the same class and played on the same team since seventh grade. So yeah, I remember him. See, that's when I was going to Creekside or whatnot. But yeah, I moved to Kansas, and that's when uh, I pretty much, that's the first experience or exposure I had to the stock market. Mm -hmm. Cause I went, I went from going to an all black school, which I, if I could count on my hands, there's probably five white students at Creekside. But at- um, They probably hate that shit. They probably go home like, why do we live here? <laughs> <laughs> hey, no cap, I used to be thinking that shit too. I'd be like, damn, it's only five of y'all here. Like, do y'all like not? Have, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they like, like those are the poorest white people. Nah, it's just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit, I don't if you know. was a white parent and you came home and your kids told you, I didn't see any white people all week, you gonna leave them at that school? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck did them kids do? You wanna show out? Next year, you're going to Creekside. <laughs> yeah, <boy. laughs> That's got to be punishment, nigga. White Man, people who went to an all-black high school, they don't never talk about that shit. That is they just They shit just start in college. But it's always that one, though. Like, no matter where you went, did you have a white person at your high school? Man, I'm from Mississippi. About 60 to 70% of my high school was white. We had a small little group of black folks. So that's how it was in Kansas. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I think it was more like 60-40. In Kansas, it was like damn near 90% white, um, like probably 2% black. That's and fucked some, up. Some other shit. You feel I me? wouldn't send my kids to no all white school, man. Well, I ain't had no choice at the time. We was in Manhattan, Kansas, uh, where uh, Kansas or K State. The, uh, There's some niggas somewhere around there, bro. It was though. Y'all would have had to get up early. And that's where I went. I went right to the local. 30 minutes uh, away or something. I actually man. left the rival school, Manhattan, to go to Junction City because I heard it was more black people. Was it? Which it was. Yeah, How yeah. many more? It was like damn near the ratio went to like 35 percent. That's where you should have been the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, that's the re I ain't gonna lie. That's the real reason I left that school. It was just it was 90 percent white, and I just felt out of place. I, yeah. I come coming from Atlanta, and you know what I'm saying. I just needed a little bit more diversity. Exactly. Know? The schools got to should be 50 50. All of them. Mm -hmm. I think you can't just have no fucking five black students. Well, who lives in Kansas? I'm just saying, it's a lot of niggas in Kansas. Well, it really is, man. That shit's surprising. Yeah. Shout out to Kansas. 
Oh yeah, shout out to Kansas. The Kansas, Kansas, or like Kansas, Missouri. Kansas, Kansas. Kansas. Yeah, all right. Like I was out there in Kansas, dog. Flat. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, it is kind of flat. It is. I fucks with it. Bro, how much money you think it'll take investing to make some money right now for the people watching this shit? Cause there's some people out there who. What they, type of money? Cause I can give you a game cash. plan. I'm talking about like. Give me a number of, of what daily goal, okay. So I'm thinking about like. Give me a daily goal and I'll tell you how to make it. If you like, be realistic. If you said, what would you be cool with making right now at this moment, every day? Me? Trading, yeah. Trading? Yeah. Man, I think realistically mm -hmm. about, if you can make about 10 G's a day. Well, I just made 16,000 a day. That's what I'm saying. So, 10 to 15, 20? A hundred. Okay. hundred see, 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 you trying to, see, see, you actually trying to go big. I was trying to do something realistic for the audience. You Bro, it's some, you don't, that's what, don't never discount the audience, man. Okay. These motherfuckers got money, bro. No, I'm saying like, okay, 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 cool. I'm telling you, like, you think niggas been You want to make 10K a day? That's, that's just realistic. Okay. Let's do it. So, I told you I can help you with any number. So, in order to make 10K a day, you're going to need, in my opinion, at least 250 grand of capital. Let me tell you why. Shit, you better. All right, so, so I ain't staying. Now, don't get me wrong, you can make it with 100K, <laughs> okay. but at the end of the day, you're gonna have to risk a lot. So in order to make 10K in option trading, right, we're gonna need about 250,000. Okay. And the reason why is because we only want to play with 20% of our account. Okay. So let's just say we playing with 250,000, right? Get my phone, let me see what 20% of that is. And that's how much we gonna play with. Okay. All right. So 250 grand and then times 0.2. So that's 50K, just what I was thinking. So 50K is the number that we're gonna play with. The reason why I don't wanna start with a low number is because I wanna give us room for error. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So now we're playing with 20% of our account, 250,000, and we're playing with 50,000 at a time on the table. And our goal is to make 20% of that. And 20% of 50,000 would be what? 10K. I think. Maybe you got that. I think so. Oh yeah, 50,000. I'm high, so I gotta make sure. All right, it's 10,000. So boom, just what I said. So it's called the 2020 rule. So you said you wanted to make 10,000 a day. Okay. So my high ass was like, that would be about 250K, and I was right. So 250K. Okay, security. Right, is, right. Our, is, our, is how much we have. All right, 50,000 is what you're going to use, use to trade with. That's the number I was looking for. Right. I think you might have scared some of them off when you said 250. I know a lot of niggas with 50. Right. And the niggas I know with 250 ain't black. But you, asked, straight, me two, you asked me realistically yeah. what you would need to make 10,000 a day. And I said, okay, I'm gonna give you the answer. Now, if you would have said 1,000, I would have had a more realistic answer All for right, people. 1,000. Okay, 1,000 a day. A thousand a day, we're going to need about, 000. yeah, about 25,000. Right. Exactly. So 25,000 is what you would need to average about a thousand a day, and let's break it down. Now you already know the breakdown. Exactly. 5,000 exactly. is what you're gonna be playing with. So you're going to need what is called high probability setups in okay. trading. There you go. So basically, I'm like a lion in the jungle, in the bushes, waiting to attack. Lurk. And, and basically, I got eight things that I'm waiting on my prey to do, okay. which is the stocks, All right? right bet. So, first thing. Those, so the first thing, it would probably be <clears throat> like a breakout. Like I got certain like stuff. So like, let's just say the gazelle drink water, the lion attacks, that's me. If you, if the stock does that, I'm gonna attack. If the stock does that, I'm gonna attack. But I got eight things I want this stock to do before I attack, you see what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm going to attack with $5,000. And then I want to profit just 20% of that 5,000 and that's 1,000. So instead of people trying to always double their money, how about you use a lot of money and take a little bit of that money, you see what I'm saying? See, people be trying to double, they be trying to turn 400 into 800 when they should be using 
5,000 to make a thousand. You see what I'm saying? And that's what people go wrong. They trying to hit big instead of trying to use a lot to hit small. And then you hit big. Consistency. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's the strategy. game. That's the game right there. You exactly. just really laid the whole game out. I did. And it ain't just, that's how you, that's how I approach it's management. That's how I approach everything, man. Yeah. Say so what, cat? That's life. Yeah. Man, that weed man did a good job raising you, man. <laughs> <laughs> on, on some real shit, Aristotle. You didn't came in here, spit some more game. What else would you like to put them up on, bro? Before you know, is it yeah. is, is it any more game you can can put the people man, up I on? I got plenty, man. Um, but Let yeah, them know I where do, they can I find the book. Say this, I got a book okay. uh, called "Find a Problem, Sell the Solution," and it's about how I scale my Instagram organically, how to uh, how I run my ads because. Uh, I did the math, about 150K of my followers came from ads, so so kind of close to half. So uh, I teach people how I structure my ads. Yeah, most people. of my followers when my news leaked out. <laughs> they what news was that? They, my news. Oh, news. Yeah. Oh, oh. Just a bunch of horny women. Oh, oh. They don't know shit about my comedy career. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking around, man. Yeah. I know because now that I know him in DC been making money on the side, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Ain't now one of them niggas said nothing to me. And then he just think he just gonna bring me some weed and we supposed to be cool. <laughs> nah, Aristotle. That was nah, that was hey, fucked nah, up, man. Hey, that's you, cause you, you brought the weed cause you knew you and DC had been making $10,000 a day. I and I know, dude. I know. Yeah. Okay. I brought, I brought black only. <laughs> nah, yeah. man, but this is the black market presented to you by 85 yeah. South Show. Yeah. And just yeah. know, brother, we rooting for you. We know we hearing your name. We seeing what you're doing out here. And, man, much success to everything that you got going on. Anything that 85 South Show or anybody affiliated with this can do to help you get the word out, promote, whatever, run some ads. Don't just be spending your money with the motherfucker. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, nah, for real. Now, no, I know. Now we know you got all this money, we're going to overcharge you. So just know that. The price going to sound stupid. Y'all going to tax us. Yeah, I'm from the South. The price going to sound stupid. But you rich. Man, we listen, we gotta I, overcharge you. I respect. I respect. That's the thing. No, I respect you, man. You feel me? Real shit, man. I appreciate you coming through here. You're more than welcome to follow back through here. Let's get the seminar cracking, man. We man, got listen. damn near two million followers. Also got a uh, live tour too uh, coming up. Uh, Talk where about we traveling it. the country. Um, our first stop was in Atlanta, but we're gonna be heading to. Uh, various other cities around the country, you feel me? Shout out some of the people in your network that made these moves and shit possible for you. Boom. So, uh, I can, that's exactly what I want to do. First and foremost, uh, my wife, my woman. She, Hold uh, up, man. Talk about how important it is to have that. So this is how I'm We thought you was is. gonna leave and not put us up on some black yeah, man exactly. love perspective too. We yeah. need to talk, bro. Yeah, exactly. Come you on, know what man. I, said? I got more. Come I got on. More. I wasn't kicking you out. Oh, oh, okay. I thought I was we were making sure we oh. did the right promo. Oh, okay. It's I business. We was... Oh, okay. Well, come on, let's get it. So basically, here's the story that I that I that I left out from the beginning. Talk so, about it. Um basically I scaled my business to about I think I was making about twenty thousand a month. Uh, by, so I did it by myself at first. Okay. I was making twenty thousand a month, but then I realized if if I had someone to manage the customers, to do all, to to uh, manage my DMs, all that, I can scale this business way faster, and I could just focus on content while somebody does all the back end work. And I'm like, who do I trust? Because my wife had a job at the time, and she was just she. She's pregnant. So that's why I started the business. As soon as she told me she was pregnant, I started the business. So I literally started the next hour. I called a homie who said he wanted to pay me for a service, and I said, all right, we ready. You feel me? Next thing you know, that one guy turned into 10. So basically, he offered to pay me $100 a month to teach him investing. So I started a mentorship program, just $100 a month, 
and I'll teach you everything I know about investing. So That's what I'm going to pay you. So, because <laughs> you did it before, you already so, said you cut half for free. I'm only paying you. Wow. Only paying you hundred dollars a month. But, but, but Shouldn't have to. You, that's what you gonna I gotta get. Tax you. That's what you get for always you. dropping numbers. I'm paying you. I gotta tax you. Your hundred dollars tax. Hell, that's thirty days. This you know how much money I'm gonna make in thirty days? This man gonna tax me first. <laughs> But that's, but that's how I got popular quick. But people was like, this dude is teaching investing for only $100. Right. Cool. So it started with one, then it started with 10, then out of nowhere it started like with 200 people. Right. In literally a month and a half. That's what's up. Like I literally scaled quickly because I use strategies like uh, that you can't do anymore. So I can just talk about it. I would, uh, first I would follow and unfollow. I had a machine, a bot. Just follow and unfollow anybody who talked about investing. Man, I would have blocked the shit out of you. <laughs> Cause I be thinking that shit fake when niggas be like, hey man, you wanna make nine million dollars in 46 seconds? I'm like, fuck out of here. So, 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 basically if you commented under an investor's page, I had this program that would follow you and send you a DM. That's fucked up. So basically, I would, I would go on all these investors' accounts and I would just, any anybody who, who commented, send them a DM. I had a bot that did that. So I was getting people who was already interested in investing to follow me. So boom, that's how I did it. That's how I went from zero to 5,000 followers. But then they banned that bot when I was at 5,000, so I had to create a new strategy. But I had already had a 5,000 base of people. But out of those 5,000 people, I had already done scaled my business to about 20,000 a month. So I'm straight, you see what I'm saying? So when my wife came along, I made, so I told her, look, if you quit your job, you know what I'm saying? Look, I'll I take care of her, just quit your job and just manage the, my company on the back end. And I know this thing can go to a million. That's when I was at 20,000 a month. That was 2019. Um, so she quit her job, she was still pregnant and then she, is, she hasn't worked since. Basically, get you a wife. <laughs> he said all that just to tell you, just get you a wife. I'll, I'll say this: that all is a money. huge increase. Yeah. Twenty thousand, one million. You by yourself, a wife. I ain't gonna lie. Like uh, I scaled quickly because of her, cause she answered. So she cleared my DMs every day. Yeah. So that means more customers would pay. So, and she also made my websites. Um, she answers the DM. She reports to me back with it, anything. She does my taxes. Uh, you know, all that. She, she, you know, I never pay. I don't even know how much my mortgage costs. I don't know how much my light bill costs. You know, I just give her. Bro, you, I probably need to give you a media class because you just be saying so much shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, now your wife gonna watch this and be like, you know the bill is 70000 this month. <laughs> I honestly don't know how much bills I have. Yeah, she gonna know now. <laughs> but at the same time. Yeah, 70,000 for the light bill. The light bill. <laughs> I told them kids, cut them lights off. <laughs> hey. Bro, the first rule mm -hmm. to being a black man mm -hmm. with some money, mm -hmm. repeat after me. What's that? I don't have no money. Boom. It don't matter how much you make, stick to the script. I ain't even gotta say that. They just know that I, I ain't going, you feel me? Bruh, <laughs> don't they matter if you about. get seven billion. Act like you ain't got it. All your partners who know you got money, ask them for $10 sometime. <laughs> <laughs> and be sincere. And tell them, bro, I'm fucked up right now. Yeah. If you believe in me like you believed in me when I had it. I be asking them sometimes, like sometimes I got to tip people and I be like, hey bro, let me borrow 50. They just be, then they be like, ah, oh, this nigga, no I ain't got but 50, but I got to get it. <laughs> Hold up, bro. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> that nigga rich as hell, man. <laughs> How much you said, bro? Hell no. Nah. Man, this nigga ain't going to let me keep coming around right. if I don't get up. It's my oh, last yeah, man, bro. <laughs> Everybody ain't able, bro. Everybody ain't able. 
Yeah, they probably do be like that sometimes, though. Man, God. the niggas who rode up here with you gonna be so quiet in the I car. Don't ever... <laughs> they already heard you say that you need $250,000. <laughs> To make 10 a day. Yeah, they're gonna be like, man, on, bro. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what shot it on, bro. <laughs> Drop me off on my sister house, bro. <laughs> my sister house, bro. This nigga tripping, tripping, bro. You heard what bro said? <laughs> he know I'm fucked up. I need 400 right now. I also want to say this I'm not, we're not smoking uh, backwoods or tobacco at all. Okay. We are smoking tea leaves. Well, so, well how, did that, how did you like that? I mean, so we are smoking herbal. You own leaves. this too? Nah, I need, I need some uh, shares in them, but I do own shares of Viola. A lot of shares. Now see, six figures plus worth shares. Yeah, they fire, bro. You you really got a nice operation going on over here. You mean, what is it, cat? Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. Well, Alan Iverson. Oh, thank you. Hell yeah. Yep. So I keep up with it. T.I.'s investing into it. I think Lil Baby is too. You ain't told me nothing. But you in D.C. out here making money on the side. I didn't even know G Money had cut a side deal. Uh, man. <laughs> you know? Just like, yeah. Everybody sure knew who they are this year. <laughs> wow. 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 Nah. Nah, I fuck with you, bro. Come back and put us up on game. This is just part one. Of the oh, yeah, uh, seminar. One. I'm, I'm a huge fan. I do. I did want to say this on camera, man. Uh, I want to say this on camera too. <laughs> What's up? Before we start recording, Aristotle told me before he got rich, he used to watch this show. <laughs> he knew exactly what I was gonna say. Then man. the nigga uh, got money uh, and stopped watching it. <laughs> you come in here like we cool now. <laughs> I ain't Listen, holding nothing back. I got. I got an excuse for that. I don't watch TV. I don't entertain. I, Bro, you entertain. gonna tell you how you fucked up? Why? Because this ain't even fucking TV. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't TV. This ain't hell, bro. <laughs> bro, I don't watch TV no more. Yeah, nah. Yeah, you rich. You got plenty of time. Nah, I know you're out here rich and working hard. Don't fucking sell the people it, it, that illusion, man. Be, I don't know, man. I be having to focus on creating a lot, and I, I actually enjoy that. It's like a hobby. You already have created it, nigga. We finna invest these stocks to oh, no, a I billion, still, I, nigga. I watch y'all. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I watch y'all. I'm saying. You talking, I'm talking about, about like I'm saying like y'all were what I remember glimpses of when I was still in the army. It wasn't. I wasn't saying I stopped watching y'all. What I was saying was before when y'all first took off. I was grinding at the same time as y'all, so I started my business around the time when y'all first started touring, I think. Okay, man. When did y'all first start touring? Shit. Man, I'm high. I don't know, bro. <laughs> when, we, when we left, man. <laughs> and when we on tour right now, nah, we, I remember that shit, though, when man. When we went on tour, cat. 2016, late. Yeah, it's I been five years. I used to years. go to my homeboy McCoy house because uh, I had already left base and I was a barber. And I used to go to this house. We used to watch 85 South Show and just kick. Shout out to that boy McCoy. Shout out to you, boy. For real. All the uh, people in the army, man. I they watch 85 South? Oh, yeah. Shout, shout out, out to everybody shout out to in the everybody military, in the man. Army, still in the army, I didn't man. know that, bro. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm famous in the army. Everybody know me in the military. For real? I'm that story that they use, like, in soldiers use for clapback to their uh, sergeant when they be like, you can't make it outside of this military. Because that's what they would tell us while we was inside. Like they'll be cause, cause they they need scare tactics in order to keep you in. It's oh. called retention. Yeah. So a lot of times they want to kind of instill that there's a no way out and we're going to take care of you, type. You know what I'm saying? Environment. We all we got. Yeah. Like like don't worry. We're gonna give you these benefits. We're gonna give you this and that. There's no reason to leave. Do your 20. You know what I'm saying? But make sure you're the best tip top soldier. Now if you a bad soldier, they will want you to get out. Right. But the good soldiers, man. They won't, they'll do anything to keep you in. That's what's up, I guess. Dang, you got me thinking about the military. I used to do a lot of shows for the military. Yeah, There's a lot of little Hispanic girls in there with fat little asses, too. <laughs> That's the part of the military they don't tell you, but you got a wife, I say it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the military bases. There's some fat asses in the United States Armed Services. Shit, I've seen, I seen them. Some of the fattest asses our country has to offer is serving this country. 
I've been to Kuwait. I've been on the base. I seen some shit. What song came with like Mr. Mrs. Officer, like Lil Wayne, you feel nah, me? She in the army, like mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. now nah, you ain't wanna fuck with them. Cause you know them, them chicks who be in the military, they be ready to get out of that shit. They want you to see how fine they are with their shit on. Like they like they be like, this my work shit. Wait till the night. Yeah. When they come to the show. Right. And then you be like, shit! <laughs> That's what you had in them big ass pants. <laughs> Been over there. You know, I've been in the military six years, so you know. You miss it? Oh, uh, no. But I do, I will say this. I do miss the uh, competitiveness uh, when we would do PT and all that and just how pure it was. Like, we weren't worried about who had more money than the other person. We weren't worried about nothing. We grown ass men playing like kids. Having sure. fun, like we in the field, like wrestling, playing, like no, no homo, no shit like that. No, I'm saying like, why oh. shit is real? Huh? Niggas is out there with ammo and shit. Like, come on, you can't get me. I mean, no, we, we been well. It just, you know, we just doing a lot of competitive stuff, like obstacle course. We just made. It, it really reminded me of when we was a kid and we would just make up stuff. And that's all we did in the military, just make up shit to do every day. <laughs> that's literally all we got there did. We, Look, there's no war going on. So we look, everything they doing right now is made up. I'm telling you, like, it's a random BS. Like, most, well, not most, but, like, some people actually have tasks. They, you know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, bro, like, in the, if you see some of these bases and units, bro, they making up shit. They, don't, they just making up tasks to do every day, and I was in one of those units. Mm. We made up shit, but it was fun. Man, this is some good-ass week. This is some good ass black weed. on weed. It's black on. Damn. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Shout out to Nino and Brown. And it's coming from Detroit. You feel me? So that's how we doing it. Yeah. I knew this was some Detroit weed. As soon as I lit it, it was like, what up, though? <laughs> <laughs> so you know they what they do is he grows it there because it's legal. Yeah. So yeah. I love going to Detroit. And that's what, like, anytime you get some weed in Detroit, they give you way more than you expected to get. I never been to Detroit. Why not? I don't know, like, I never really had an interest, but I like Chicago. Go to Detroit. It's just, it's just like, you can feel the spirit of blackness. It's Motown. Bro, Detroit got some of the Love prettiest that. black women in America. Tell me. Go. It's I so love good. Motown music. It's ho you gotta go to Motown. It's the I real Motor Motown. City. I love all old school music, man. 90s you gotta go. Have, all you, that shit. have you been to well, you gotta go to you gotta go. Alright, man. I need I need to definitely get these shirts, all of them. Yeah, them shirts are actually three thousand dollars a piece, man. <laughs> <laughs> We probably got your size too, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah them shirts. That's that's them exclusive. Hey, he taught me a lesson. I ain't them, got no money. I didn't say nothing. Got he taught me yeah, a lesson. Yeah, I'm sure bro. that's out the private hey, collection, hey. bro. Them uh, them them M uh, NFTs right there, bro. Man. Is it on NFT? Yeah, man. Ain't no them ain't on the streets yet. But if we probably got your size, man. If you wanna go ahead and cop from an exclusive collection and shit. Right, they don't say. You know how we get down, Corey. Cool, you know. Yeah, I learned. I, I learned a lesson from Carlo, man. You know I'm telling you, that's 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 rule number don't, one. Don't tell no no black people you got money, bro. I don't give a fuck if you make a hundred million dollars, man. Now that's Just, one thing wait, I wait, keep wait. on the low is my net worth. But so let I me tell you, I feel you it's that. certain things as a black man that you have to do for the ancestors, bro. You gotta have some money saved up somewhere in the house. You gotta have a sock, just like for your granddad and them. It's like how you bring good spirits in the mm. house. You remember when you was a barber? Granddad always had some money. You get what I'm there. saying? You get exactly what I'm saying. Honestly, <clears throat> yeah, I do feel like we need to carry some traditions. We do. Like, like even if they don't make sense. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, let's just. Just carry this on, you feel me? Like getting a switch exactly. and going to whoop your child ass, you feel me? Like, that's a tradition. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like uh, that, Child that's abuse that's is a tradition. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? 
we, we got we, we we definitely gotta bring some traditions in, man. You Not know? child abuse though. We gonna stop whooping kids. White people don't whoop their kids. What the fuck our kids gotta act good for? <laughs> we, we, we out here trying to be good for nothing. We ain't whooping our kids no goddamn more. Fuck it. Put them in time out. Stop yeah, hitting man. black children. Look how many of us fucked up right now. One ass whooping. That one real ass whooping that you'll never forget. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the shit you need to go to therapy for right fucking now. Hey, do you think ass whoopers are PTSD? Fuck yeah, nigga. Anytime you get hit and you can't do nothing about it, it's PTSD. <laughs> I just thought of that. Damn. So we got a lot Discipline of PTSD. Discipline is fine, but you we be over whooping our goddamn kids, man. Damn, we got a lot of discussions in the black community. We need to talk about our whoopings, PTSD. We got, yes. It's yes. Mm. Being Damn. hit with shit is PTSD. And plus, yeah, you never do forget them, nigga, though, so they gotta be PTSD. Them the only people but you can it, hit. But does it make us? Uh, let me let me say Nowhere why else PTSD. in the world can you hit anybody. You're an adult. You can't just hit motherfuckers because shit not going your way. <laughs> no, okay, you'll get your ass whooped. Nigga, in America, we're not We don't about, even know that. that. in the world. And we don't even know everywhere that. Everywhere else in the world, you'll get your ass whooped. We don't know that. <laughs> the people everywhere else in the world are going to be watching like, this is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you have a right to defend yourself. What are you crying If your man, mother what? hits you, hit the bitch back. He ain't never seen that. Let no father, one disrespect boy. you. Hell, what the hell? What do African fathers whoop ass, boy? And that's why the family hates them. That's true, though. Nobody loves their African father. It is true, goddamn. You're right about that, boy. They do be goddamn like, damn, bro. African me. fathers die, be like eight hell. people at the funeral. That brother he ain't seen in 10 years. <laughs> Some family from out of town that y'all don't know. And y'all, that's it. All right, man. The world fucked up, and I'm just here to tell you about it. Hey, man. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of The Black Market. We're smoking black weed black with weed. black investors. All My right. man Aristotle from All the South that. Side, bro. Much from love and much side, success man. to you, fam. All that. Yeah. We, we out of here. We out.